Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your man, Tim Swain. And today I am sitting with the founder and managing director of Agency 77. And today, listen, you need to tune in because we are talking about the legal aspect. We don't cut corners, but the legal aspects of what you need to know about business here in Ghana. Carlo. Tim. It's great to see you. It's great to see you. You look amazing. You look amazing. So do you. You look fantastic. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. <laughs> and I really appreciate your time. We've been trying to make this conversation happen for a while. That's right. But just due to situations, uh, it wasn't able to come to fruition. But now is the time because somebody watching this or someone scrolling through YouTube at 4 a.m. in the morning and boom, this video will pop up and it's going to help change their life. I know that. So we're here in your office at Agency 77. Before we get into some of these specific questions yeah. around legal entities and stuff like that, can you just give us a little bit of a background of how you got into law? Okay, so I've been a lawyer now for many years. Um, and, you know, when I finished high school, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. Um, so I was kind of guided gently to study law. Um, I actually studied law in the United Kingdom, uh, University of Bristol. Uh, which allows you to study law as an undergraduate degree. I know that in the U.S., for example, you can't do that. You have to do something else yeah, well. before. But in the U.K., you can just do it as a degree, kind of like you do economics or English or something like that. So that's what I did. I got a Bachelor, bachelor of Laws. And to be perfectly honest, after that, I wasn't sure I wanted to go ahead and then qualify as a professional lawyer. Because like I said, when it's a Bachelor of Laws, it's not a professional qualification. You have to go on and the U.K. has a a way of doing it where they have two different streams. You can become a barrister or a solicitor. That's the way they do it there. Um, so actually, I was really interested kind of in the arts and I wanted to become a film director. Really? Yeah, that was my plan at the time. <laughs> but, you know, my, um, my mom didn't think that was a great idea or rather she said, you know, why don't you complete the law first, which is not a bad plan. Um, come back to Ghana, do the bar you know, have a fallback plan. And then if you go ahead and become a film director, if you're not making money, mm -hmm. you always have something to fall back on. Wow. Um, so I came, did the bar, and then it was like, oh, just get some work experience in an offer, which I did. And, you know, after some years have passed, you kind of, you're stuck in it. Yeah. So yeah, so that was my path to becoming a lawyer. Wow. So I guess mommy truly knows best. <laughs> but, yeah, but I think that now what I'm doing is a combination of the thing that I'm more naturally interested in and um and then the law i remember there's a line from i don't know if you remember this movie it's quite old now the devil's advocate which has i think uh i think it's keanu reeves and uh yeah al pacino so well al pacino plays like well essentially the devil right yeah. and um and keanu reeves becomes a lawyer and then at one point he finds out who his dad is and then he says dad why no and then al Al's character says, you know, because the law puts you into everything. Mm. So in a way, I think it's true. So you can be a lawyer and you can still focus on an area that you're interested in. Could be engineering, could be construction, could be, you know, entertainment. It's so many different things. So I think a combination between the professional skill and experience and your own interest is probably the best combo. Wow. So that's, yeah. that's, really, that's a really good way of looking at it. Because, I mean, ultimately, if you're going to be doing something that you're investing a significant part of your life into, it should be something that you enjoy. And if you want to really take it to the next level, it should be something that you're good at. Absolutely. Um, and we know that um, you are now here in Ghana. So you're not just um, uh, showing up for this video and practicing law in the UK, but you are actually here in Ghana. Yeah. So talk to us about um, maybe the, the, the areas specifically that you focus on here in Ghana or your agency, Agency 77, focus yeah. on. So basically, Agency 77 is not a law firm. I describe it as a business advisory firm. And um, so, like I said, I started it now, uh, 2019. So I ended up starting, beginning it kind of just before we launched into the pan pandemic, which, you know, we didn't see it coming, but probably wasn't the best time. But, you know, at some point, so I worked, like I said, I worked at a law firm, uh, Ben Cienchel, Le Chan, and Koma here. And then from there, I actually went uh, to work at a TV station in management, corporate communications, and then went back into mining and then oil and gas in-house law. Wow. But then at some point I thought, you know, this interest, burning interest I have and, you know, doing my own thing and, you know, um, also working with people who are creatives and SMEs, it's now or never, you know, mm. otherwise I'll just keep on here until I retire. So I decided to step out and take a chance. So 
that's what Agency 77 does. It provides um, support to people who are small and medium-sized enterprises, um, to people in the creative industries, tech. Um, content creators. Content creators, exactly. Um, <laughs> that kind of thing. Who I feel have traditionally been underserved in Ghana. Mm. And, you know, like I said, I've always had a, an interest in things like film and music. And I actually did a short course in film directing at NAFTI some years ago. Really? And I remember asking some of the people at the time, you know, what's the highest box office movie? And nobody really knew, you know, and, and other things. And, you know, when you ask people in something like the film industry, what do they need? They'll tend to say money. Mm -hmm. We need money. But as a lawyer, I thought to myself, you know, every industry is the same. If you're trying to raise funds, you know, serious funds for a project, whether it's a creative enterprise or not, or whether it's building a building, you know, if you're going to try and raise funds from a traditional uh, finance company, a bank or something like that, you're going to have to show certain information, right? You have to know the industry statistics. You need to know your own projected earnings, stuff like that. Um, and people in the film industry at the time, anyway, didn't seem to have that information. So it just struck me that there are many kind of creatives as well as business people who mean more attention paid to them by certain types of professionals, lawyers, accountants, and then they'll find that the money flows in more easily, right? They think they just want the money, but what they actually need is to have better contracts, their business is better organized, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then you have confidence. A finance mm -hmm. firm will have confidence loaning you money, et cetera. Okay, so then let's talk about, uh, you know, there's a lot of folks watching right now in Ghana, outside of Ghana, people interested in doing business in Ghana, people currently doing business in Ghana. Yes. Maybe walk us through some of the basics. Uh, if I'm entering into this country, what are some of the basic business entities that are available? Let's imagine I want to come to Ghana and sell, you know, um, I want to I want to do real estate. Yeah. And I want to buy some homes and I want to rent them out. Yeah. What are, what are my choices in terms of business entities for registration? So, um, so firstly, if you are not a Ghanaian citizen, very important, whether as a as a human, as an individual, or as a an organization, what you need to know is that there's a minimum capital requirement. You can't just come in with, you know, a thousand dollars or a thousand pounds and set up a company here. You know, um, that's because like in like in most other countries in the world, this smaller businesses in a sense are reserved for for Ghana. Under our Ghana Investment Promotion Center Act, um, they, there are certain thresholds if a foreign entity, which includes just a, an individual, um, payment thresholds. Right. Um, but just we we'll, we can come to that later. But the different types of entities you can start. Because I was going to ask, because people want to know, what is that payment threshold? But I'm sure that's a burning question that people have. Yeah. So um, so don't quote me, but I think that the minimum is $200,000. Even if, even if you have a minimal percentage. So even if you were to partner with a Ghanaian and you had 10%, the minimum you would need to invest in order to become an owner, a registered owner of a business in Ghana. I think it's $200,000. This information is, um, if you contact us, we can give it to you, but actually you can just go online and uh, yeah. search GIPC. Um, that information is freely available and it goes up to about a million dollars depending on the type of business. So that's, that's regardless of the level of, let's say, profits or income that you anticipate earning. So if I anticipate my first year is going to earn $5,000 versus $500,000 as a non Ghanaian citizen, that financial threshold, regardless of my regardless. Yes, it is. Dead. It's yes, it, 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 it's a big investment, but it's just about the fact that for a foreign, uh, a non Ghanaian uh, person and by person that can be a legal person, which can be a corporation, a company, or it can be a human being, for a non ghanaian person to come and start doing business in Ghana, there is a, a, a threshold, there's a minimum capital, basically investment threshold. And like I said, it actually works the same in many countries across the world. Sometimes I think there is the assumption that maybe because it's Africa, people, you could just come in and, yeah. and just set up and start. And of course, I think Ghana is, you know, absolutely open to business and looking to welcome people, but you have to be aware of that. And, you know, if you hear that there are people doing it, 
believe me, they are not doing it legally. If they just come and set up, you know, sometimes, Tim, you, I know you've been here for a while, maybe you hear about, you know, you know, people complaining about Nigerian businesses having set up, and that's, you know, Nigerian, uh, Nigeria is actually a member of ECOWAS, mm-hmm. right? But even for a Nigerian person, you still have to really come up to that threshold, technically. You can't just come here and set up even as a member of ECOWAS, so even our neighboring countries can't. Um, you can come here, you can live here, but if you're going to actually do business here, there's a threshold. Wow. Yeah. So does that? So the type of business entity that you want to set up, does that threshold impact it? And if so, or if not, what are some of those different entities? Specifically speaking to the, let's say the non uh, citizen that's coming into Ghana. There are a number of different ent- entities. So there's one that kind of everybody knows, which is called the sole proprietorship, right? And essentially the sole proprietorship is just you as the human being, you know? So what you're really doing is you're registering a business name with our registrar general's department, right? Um, or registrar of companies now. Uh, so you're registering a business name and you're doing business but and you and the business are not separate. This gets slightly technical. Um, a lot of people understand, but there's some who, who might not be so familiar with the, t- the terminology. So just to explain, then another option is to set up uh, a company, basically, um, a limited liability company, which is what they call it, mm-hmm. right? It's called limited liability because um, what the, how, how they say it is that your liability in the company in limited to the value of your shares. So just to, you know, explain that a little bit further. So let's say, you know, your shares are valued at, I don't know, $5,000. If you go and get a loan for $50,000 um, and the company goes bankrupt, technically, um, except in a few exceptional cases, technically, they cannot come after your personal assets. They can't come after your house, the house that's in your name. They can't come after your car. So they will ha- They can only go after the asset that belongs to the company itself. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a company. And another crucial thing about a company is that the company and the person or the persons who own it are separate in the sense that a company in and of itself can enter into contracts. So that's why, so for example, if you're an employee of a company, a big company, yeah. um, you are employed by the company itself. You know, so let's say one of the big companies have Vodafone, right? You know, if you have a contract with Vodafone, it's Vodafone that's employing you, not any of the individuals in Vodafone, right? And by that same to- token, a company can, like I said, enter its contract, it can own assets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The company and the human being are two separate legal persons. No, this is really good information because, as you said previously, so many people come, they're excited. I have so many people and a lot of y'all out there watching who've been following me for a while. Thank you for that. But people get excited. I'm going to come to Africa. Yes. And they meet some boy boy who tell them that they can help them start a business. Yep. And if you say, okay, you do everything for me. Yeah. You come back with some paperwork that looks legitimate. Exactly. And then something happens. And then you try to go to court and they say, well, Charlie, this one was written in crayon. So I don't know exactly. why you got this. I mean, what it happens is I'm laughing, but it it, reads, it literally happens all the time. Yeah. So then here's a, here's a question that a lot of people w- 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 would ask, right? If I'm coming in as a non-citizen and I have to pay these $250,000 that I probably don't have, but then I really do want to make an impact and make a difference here in Ghana, do I really need an attorney? Ideally, yes. Um, you know, for a couple of reasons. So just to go back to what you said, like, you know, somebody will give you the wrong advice. And and before we go forward, there are other uh, entities that you can register. You can register a charity. Mm-hmm. And over here in Ghana, that's a, called a company limited by guarantee. There are limited and unlimited partnerships. Um, but I would say, you know, the, the company is, is, the, is the most popular for a privately owned business, right? A partnership, an unlimited partnership, like lawyers, for example, you know, can can do an un, un, unincorporated partnership. So that also there are other options, you know, and a charity too. It's its own thing. But uh, do you need a lawyer? No, you don't need a lawyer. You can, you know, go and do it for yourself. You can do it yourself. But then you are risking. You're taking a big risk because, just as you say, um, 
there are all kinds of people who will say to you, oh, you know, I can do this for you. Oh, yeah, you know, all you need to do is register. I mean, I've had people thinking that they had registered a company. And only when, you know, they showed us the documentation to realize that actually it was a sole proprietorship that was registered. All they have is a business name. So they've registered a company. They're talking about, oh, I want to bring in a, a, bring a partner into the business. And these are even Ghanaians, right? And I want to get a partner. So I want to, you know, sell some shares. I want to transfer some shares. And then we see it. And it's like, well, you can't transfer shares. There are no shares in this entity. It's a sole proprietorship, for example. Um, or... You know, like you said, they've registered. And even now, some of the requirements at our, you know, company's registry have become a bit more difficult. Like you need a Ghana card. You can also have a, a non-citizenship card. So it's not that as a, a non ghanaian you cannot register. But all those things, they've kind of upped the due diligence, the KYC, you know, requirements. So if you are... The, the, if you are bypassing some of those requirements, the somebody's telling you they can do this and do that. And the problem is that you get people who, you know, yeah, sometimes we call them Goro boys. Oh, which is, you know, some of these people who hang out outside, outside some of these like regulatory entities, yeah. they you could pay me this. And Tim, the thing is that sometimes you're not paying them any less than you'd be paying a lawyer. Yeah. You're not necessarily paying them any less than you'd be paying a company like If you are a Rooney, then it always goes up. Yes. So, um, and now also, I mean, you know, we don't want to lose business here, but there's a lot of information online. Yeah, but you know, what I've realized is, even from my personal experience, having started a business in the U.S. and even an NGO, I have learned the hard way why you need an attorney. Yeah. I mean, and, and the, the reality is contracts are not written by the average person, they're written by attorneys. Yeah. So if you are an, if you are an average person like myself trying to read a contract, you're not going to understand what it says. And there have been, I ain't going to share all my business, but one particular situation comes to mind that really made it hit home where as a part of my NGO, we thought we were doing some things in the right way only to realize we weren't. Yeah. And so on top of having to pay like a lot of money that we lost, we had to pay a lot of money in attorney fees, a lot of money in accounting fees to rectify the situation. And it really hit home to me. This is why you're supposed to put people in place that are professionals yes. ahead of time because you you don't you're not saving money by trying to cut corners. No. You're actually gonna lose money in the long run. And then on top of that, you know, for a person like myself who has an NGO, it prevents us from actually doing the mission that we want to do because we're held up in these other areas. So I'm in agreement that I think you need an I know you need an attorney. Yeah people that are watching, what would be maybe some two to three pieces of advice if they want to come to Ghana and start a business, regardless of what it is? If you want to come to Ghana and start a business, first of all, get a reputable organization to help you. Some, you know, agency services, there's lots of them. There's lots of reputable organizations or lawyers or, uh, you know, advisory firms. I mean, you have all, you have the big companies here like KPMG, et cetera. If you don't want to spend that much money, you can go to a smaller entity, but go somewhere reputable. Do not and 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 nowadays, like I always say, well, check on the internet as well. If somebody's coming and telling you I can do this for you, I can, you know, get you citizenship. I've heard also things like that. People come and promise people, oh, I can get you citizenship, and then you're paying somebody, and yeah. there's no website and stuff like that. It's you know, it's a red flag. Don't do that. Go to. Um, Go to a lawyer or go to an account or business advisory firm. Make sure that they have a website. You know what I mean? Not that there may be some that don't have websites, but in this day and age, most, you know, reputable organizations, even the smaller ones, have some kind of online presence. You know, so make sure that they have a website and you can verify for yourself. Um, and also, you can go directly to some of those agencies like the registered general department companies. Reg you can go there yourself and do the registration. Well, it's not easy. Like, I know, mate, with the... It's too much, Charlie, it's too much. You read the papers, you're like, I What does yes. this mean? Exactly. I mean, there's a lot of things that people don't understand. Nowadays, the requirements about beneficial ownership. There's all kinds of things. You need somebody who understands this, yep. the, the, the system and also somebody for whom there's accountability. Again, the reason why you need a reputable lawyer or in business advisory, etc., is that you also need accountability because some of these people that you go, you pay... And it happens to Ghanaian citizens all the time. Yes. Not just, yeah. It's not just non ghanaians It happens yeah. to Ghanaian citizens all the time. Um, but maybe sometimes Ghanaians are more used to it. It's like, okay, well, I lost that money too bad. On to the next, you know. But yeah. if you just come in, 
you don't want to have a bad experience. So try and find somebody who this accountability. So if it doesn't go right, it's taking longer, they're not just going to disappear with your money and you don't know who can help you. So that's what I would say. I would say definitely look for somebody you're reputable. Check and double t- check. And then talking about business, land, we don't deal with land and property here, but land and property issues, particularly in Accra, can get very complicated. So again, don't attempt to buy land without using a lawyer who knows their stuff. And the lawyer becomes highly recommended who maybe is recommended by their peers as well as people who do not attempt to buy land in Ghana without, you know, knowing what you're doing. Listen, uh, that, that, that is a message for the people. You said that that's not an area that you deal with, but I know folks are asking themselves right now because you're up at 4 a.m. scrolling through YouTube. Thank yeah. you for being here, by the way. Um, Agency 77, what are some of the services that it can help assist people watching with, whether yeah. they're citizens or non-citizens yes so uh, like i said i myself i'm a lawyer i'm a corporate lawyer i've been a lawyer for a long time um so but speaking of company registration we can not only can we advise you on the type of entity uh so we'll have a chat with you we'll find out what your needs are we can advise you on the type of entity that you need to register um just speaking about some of these i remember like i've got a client one who we once had a client who um has a kind of a beauty pageant, a reality kind of an America's Next Top Model type, you know, show that they want to do. And uh, we looked at the documentation, have it registered as a charity. So we said, one, it's technically a, a company limited by guarantee, a charity is not meant to make profit. You cannot be a profit making entity. So we said, well, why? And they said, oh, we just went there and somebody there told us this is what we need, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then you can't convert it. You actually have to do a new registration of a different mm-hmm. time yet. So what we can do is we can take a look, have a chat with you, find out what you want to do and advise you, guide you as to what type of entity you need to be registering. We can handle the registration for you. Um, We can review your contracts. We can draft contracts for you. We can uh, guide you in intellectual property law. We can handle trademark registration. Um, We can help you negotiate contracts. Um, and like I said, our focus is on small and medium-sized enterprises. We're not going to turn away a big company, <laughs> but she, uh, we find that big companies have the resources and very often have the institutional knowledge, you know, um, to hire big law firms or, you know, big accounting firms to do things for them. But it's normally the smaller businesses that have a lot of difficulty and um, are facing a lot of risk potentially. So... We focus on SMEs and, you know, people in the creative industries, like I said, creative tech. So we do all those things for you. Well, listen, guys, the information for Agency 77 is right there in the description below. You can go to their website and learn more, uh, send them a message, book a consultation. Um, Everything is outlined right there in the description below, and I'm sure they'll be able to assist you. Tell them Tim Swain sent you 99% off um, for one second only. You just missed it. But, um... Listen, uh, Carla, I am really, really excited about this conversation because I, honestly, I, I I didn't hear nobody talking about why you need an attorney. Honestly, I searched a lot of YouTube videos and I didn't hear too many people talking about this from actually the source. And so I'm really encouraged by the information. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share? I mean, there's people watching literally from all over the world. A lot of them want to come and visit Ghana. A lot of them want to help Ghana. A lot of them want to make money in Ghana. Anything else you would like to share with the audience watching? So first of all, Tim, I'd also like to say thank you for the great work that you're doing, you know, as, a, you know, you've come here from the U.S. I know you've been here for a while. And, you know, I think it's so important to try and share such important information because uh, sometimes when you come to Africa, you know, the information is not as easy to find. Mm. So it's really great to have, you know, a show like this where you're telling people what to do. So. Here's what I'd say. Um, Ghanaians are very welcoming. You know, Ghana is, you know, really a relatively safe country. It's stable, democratic. Um, you know, all, in the past few years, I, as you know, there's the whole year of the return. We're welcome to the diaspora. It's a great place to live. And actually, as you know, we have a long history of welcoming people from the diaspora, African America, who even supported us during our fight for independence on the farming mm-hmm. work. It didn't start now. There's been a resurgence. Exactly. Um, so, you know, people are always welcome. People are always coming 
But I would say, if you're trying to help somebody here, if you're trying to do charity, if you're trying to do business, do your due diligence. Mm. Because Ghana and people in Ghana are just like everybody else in the world, right? You have great people. You have some people who are trying to scam you. You have people who are responsible. You have people who know what you're doing, who know what they're doing. You have people who don't know what they're doing. So approach it like you would approach anywhere else. You know, it's kind of, don't be one of those cliche, you know, sometimes you see these Hollywood movies where people from the Western world maybe go to some kind of Asian or African country and think that, you know, you know, they're Um, they're they're a guru or something and they find that they're being scammed. You know, Ghana's a great place um, and, you know, a piece of doing business is, is fairly high in Africa, but find a lawyer, find an law firm, find a company. Um, if you're going to do charity, help people, if you're going to build a school, again, make sure the paperwork is in place. Mm-hmm. Be careful, like I said, the land issues. You have people who think, oh, I'm you know, sending money, I'm building a, a school for kids, and then they find out that the building was never built mm-hmm. or you know, the land didn't belong to who was set. You know, so just don't take those chances. Do your due diligence. Approach it like you would approach it anywhere else in the world and hire people who know what they're doing and who are reputable, please. You know, there's all kinds of people who promise you all kinds of things. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If it sounds too good to be true, if you ask other people about, you know, how much it is to register this and they tell you, they tell you. So, for example, people ask us, how long will it take to register a company, limited liability company? I always tell them realistically, a month. Gathering all the information, you know, taking it there, they might have some questions, we go back, blah, 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 that they issue a month. Then some people come and tell me, oh, you know, we could, we found somebody who said they can do it in two days. And I said, well, you know, go because. I've, I've been there. They're not telling the truth. They'll be, no, they are not. Or they will do something and you'll find irreversible mistakes in your mm. registration later so if it sounds too good to be true if somebody and and also if it sounds too crazy as well if somebody is you know attempting to charge you something exorbitant again that's another thing you know if you if you are in a country which has a stronger currency sometimes things like su- seem sound fairly cheap to you mm. again do your due diligence find out how much it's actually worth you know it's like everywhere else doesn't market rate you know, find that out because otherwise, again, you can get scammed because you're thinking, oh, I'm just spending this amount. It doesn't sound too much, but actually it might be the wrong amount here. It might actually be much cheaper. Mm. So do your due diligence. Uh, don't take unnecessary chances, but, you know, please come set up business. You make friends and we are. Visit open. Agency 77 website because they can take you through the process to help you. Um, th- this has really been informative, even for me, and I'm so grateful that you're taking some time out of your busy schedule to sit with me today, Carla. Uh, guys, listen, I know you've learned a lot. I know that you are absolutely excited about this information. Again, their information is right there in the description below. I know you are excited about this content, so do me a favor right now. If you're watching this for the first time, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and until next time, peace.